And it's time to get our country back on the right track. Let's get to work. Thank you. May God bless America. All right, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right, we want to uh, mention one other thing for Mark Callahan. He has a petition over there on the second booth, the first booth, for him to uh, get at least 500 signatures from registered voters. So that way he don't have to pay $3,000 to this marble nut house against that don't know how to control our spending. And he can be able to be put into the pamphlet book that he is a Republican nominee running for the U.S. Senate. <coughs> our next speaker will be... Hang on. <coughs> Our next speaker do not need much mentioning. Don't judge his size because his heart is big. His name is David Samuel Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming here today. No matter what walk of life you come from, you're an American first here. Doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, doesn't matter. You're an American first, and our Constitution is the supreme law of the land. The U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Now, before I get started on my speech, if you guys want to support constitutional candidates, our constitutional candidates are not asking a whole bunch for donations. For every $4 in donation that they receive is equal to them going out and earning a vote. So, so for about $20, they're going to end up with five votes. Take that Starbucks allowance that you have, put it over on your constitutional uh, uh, candidates. It's money well invested. That's called an investment. It's an investment in our future. I actually wrote a speech today. Yes, I own firearms. But the firearm does not define me. I am an American, a dad, a husband, a patriot, a statesman, a constitutionalist, a welder, a fabricator, and more. I value life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The firearm does not control my character. I do. I have owned and used firearms for over 20 years and not one person has been shot or harmed by any of these firearms. The firearm could come with the so-called evil four grips, pistol grips, clips, magazine scopes, folding or telescoping bot stocks, and even a bayonet, and this firearm does not define who I am and it does not control my actions. I use firearms legally. I'm opposed to having a concealed carry permit, but I have done so so that authorities may know that I have good intentions. In fact, I even support law enforcement and government, as long as it's constitutional. But why should I have to get a permit if I have never committed a violent crime? In principle, is that what we have now considered innocent until proven guilty? Is that I have to get a permit to exercise my rights? <coughs> If I'm trustworthy enough to own a firearm with one shot, why can't I be trusted with a firearm that holds 20, 30, or is even felt fed? When does the size of magazine or ammo or the way the ammo is fed into the firearm make you a hazard to society? The truth is the firearm doesn't make you a hazard to society. If we have not committed a crime, and we are not a hazard to society, then why are our rights being taken away?
When is it okay to take away the rights of law-abiding citizens? Never. It's like taking away driving privileges from responsible drivers when individuals go out and drink and drive. It just makes no sense whatsoever. This is abusive behavior to gun owners, sportsmen, and enthusiasts. These laws are designed to restrict or eliminate our rights and will not be tolerated and would not be tolerated if we identified as anything else. Hey Brown, we do not stand united with your proposed gun control actions. These laws will affect those who legally own firearms and are not dangerous criminals. Shame on you for trying to take away rights of law-abiding citizens. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Follow Kate Brown or step down. As American citizens, I encourage you all to stand up and speak out. As law-abiding citizens, we deserve our rights, and for them to be taken away is unconstitutional and unlawful. The first step is to get registered and go vote. The next step after that is to go meet your representatives and tell them that this is wrong. <coughs> and that this is unconstitutional, unlawful, and to stop infringing upon our rights. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless America. Okay, next we have Ian Howard with 3%. First off, I'd like to, on behalf of Oregon 3%, thank all our servicemen, veterans, first responders, and all the police out there that uh, risk their lives every day. I've been asked to uh, come up here and talk about the First Amendment, or excuse me, Second Amendment. Um, my stance on it is all the laws on the books as of right now. I believe it's something like 23,000. It's a, it's an unreal number. Uh, all we need to do is start enforcing the laws that are already on the books. We don't need emergency clauses that take our right to vote out of the picture. Uh, the Second Amendment was clearly defined. We, as the people, have the right, the God-given right, to keep and bear arms. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The Founding Fathers knew what they were doing when they wrote the documents. They gave us the right to bear arms to protect ourselves, not only from foreign threats, but also domestic. In other words, a tyrannical government, which I believe we have now. Um, basically, I, I, I can't stand for any infringement on really any of our, our constitutional rights. The Second Amendment is the absolute pillar, I believe, of the document. If we lose that, we've lost all. The more they try and push, the more we need to push back. We need to get out, get active in our political arena. We need to take uh, the seats that are available, make moves uh, to stop these people before they can get these laws enacted. Because it's a lot easier to stop a law than it is to repeal one. So I just want to encourage everybody out here to get involved in your local 3% uh, organizations, Oath Keepers, all your patriotic movements. Get out here, get active in the political arenas, like I said. <clears throat> Take back our country. That's all I have to say. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ian. Okay, next we have Ronnie Daniels. Ronnie? Can you hear me now? Woo! All right. Well, as you know, I'm just good old hun hun 
good old American here, and we're going to go ahead and give you a few quotes from our uh, founding fathers after the, uh, after the Constitution was ratified by various individuals, what they had to say about it. Sorry. I ask, sir, what is the militia? It is the whole people to disarm the people that is the best and most effective way to enslave them. This was written by George Mason, one of our founding fathers who ratified for the State of Virginia Assembly. The people are to be disarmed of their weapons. They are left in full possession of them. Arm, excuse me. People are not to be armed, disarmed of the weapons. They are left in full possession of them. Zachariah Johnson written this. And then the last one will be, whenever governments mean to invade the rights and liberties of the people, they always attempt to destroy the militia in order to raise an army upon their ruins. That was done by Representative Elbridge Grigg Jerry of Massachusetts in 1812. I bring these people up because sometimes we people tell us, oh, the Constitution was just only for this thing or that thing. That is a privilege. It is not a privilege. It is our endowed right given to us by creators and executed by the men who founded us the Constitution and make sure every man have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And without the Second Amendment, we will not have no freedoms. And I'm going to do some reading now, get you all set up. My fellow Americans, lovers of liberty, there is a mentality in the country that's hiding behind the purposely dereliction of enforcing current laws against criminals and domestic and illegal aliens that use firearms to kill, rob, or threaten innocent people, law-abiding citizens. Starting with our president slash dictator, all the way down to our own utopian-minded liberal Democrat state legislators, headed by our unelected Evita Perone, the uncorruptible Governor Kate Brown, and believe that more laws will make use make us safer from gun violence. Has it is it true? No. All right. What's going on? In the last seven and a half years, the president organ slash organ community organizer has been using every tragic shooting as his message to slowly take away our constitutional rights <clears throat> to bear arms. Starting with mandates in Obamacare to ask questions about our own gun ownerships. I ask you, do we have the people, do we the people have the right of privacy? Yes. Yes. I don't hear you. Yes. All right. It, it is government's right to monitor, is it, is it government's right to monitor law by its citizen? No. All right. Veterans that has only served in a country are being scrutinized for having a firearm, yet not given a damn about giving them our defenders of freedom the best care possible, yet our cowardly coyote enemy of the Constitution using his executive orders is blackmailing senior citizens or on losing their benefits if they are receiving assisted living care or being some, having their family members or a close friend of family or a designated person handle their financials. They are being told. It happened over in Idaho. In Idaho, the citizen who have somebody take care of his financials, does his checks, our own government told them that, so do Social Security, they're an agency. Do Social Security write laws? No. Do they suppose to enforce laws? No. Is an executive order a law? No. All right, now I got you. But nevertheless, thank God in that, you heard, you read about it, Facebook, whatever, about this senior, uh, the senior citizen and veteran. But yet there was a constitutional sheriff that said he will not enforce what the government wants over in Idaho. Let's give them a God grace handshake. This is what's happening, it's creeping on us. They're asking us veterans. Oh, you going in just to have your leg examined? And they want you to say, hey, you got a gun? How many guns in your house? 
It ain't none of their damn business how many guns I got in my house. So it is nobody's business except the individual who is a law abiding citizen. Are they going to go through and question every 10 minutes uh, an ex felon or an illegal alien? No, because that's not relevant. That's not, that goes against their agenda to take our rights. Okay. I have, and this happened on 1 15, 2016. Uh, the exact order by a fearless president to the Marble Nut House to the East. He did this stuff. Sorry, I'm just reading. Is Social Security is the Social Security Administration is a judge, jury, and executioner on terminal person in the buildings to raise to um, sorry guys, give me a second. I'm keeping your attention. Am I keeping your attention? Yeah. Okay, I'm just make sure. God didn't give me a good wake up call. You know, there's information from Social Security, if you're on it, it's possibly if there's sex order can be put through the veterans in the VA system, which will go, to, all this information will be go to the Department of Justice. Does it ju what does the Department of Justice have to do with my health? Uh, damn thing. Thank, thank you. Uh, but our president, who is exuberantly overpowered, going to powers that he does not endow, that the Constitution didn't give him, he needs to back off. I'm glad we only got less than six months with him. But... It's slowly creeping. This is stuff that went through in Russia. Registration. We're going to go through and pass laws on how many magazines, like in California. They passed six laws down there that our state legislators will be looking at this fall. One of the laws is basically, if you buy bullets, they want to have a national state database on you forever. No elapse, no expiration. And each time you go in the store, they want you to sign up and they got to take count on how many bullets you buy. Is that liberty or tyranny? Tyranny! Okay, now at the same time, your armor light 15 weapons, they're going to tell you that you can't have an extra butt stock on it. They're going to, this is the law that's already just passed as of July 1st. It's going to be enacted over time. Then they're going to tax you if you have a gun after their period in 2019. If you want to own that firearm possession, uh, does that seem fair? No. Do they have any excuse? No. Has it stopped any murders? No. Has it stopped any shootings? No. Is, the gun, is it the gun that does this stuff, or is it the individual? Okay, let's go. With, let's take that point for example. You know, Sandy Hook. We all know the bad news and all that stuff, but yet they take it out of context. They did not go through and tell you that his mama was a wife, ex-wife to a G vice president, and getting two hundred forty-five thousand dollars a year alimony, and she's always traveling around, not monster a kid. Who's supposed to have Aspergers? Did you read anything about that in the paper? Bought guns, she bought, bought all the guns by law, and she, they used to go shooting a lot. That was one of the ways he, they got to stay bonded together. And yet, you didn't hear any of that in the news media. You did not hear it anywhere. And I wish the news media would get the stories right of all Americans matter, not just a group or society. And uh, I just want you all to think about that because it may be happening here where they're going to go through and tell you you can only have a fixed barrel on your guns only and a fixed magazine. These are laws they just passed to the marble states in the south. It's coming here, people. If you don't call, send letters to your newspapers, do whatever you can, come to public hearings, you will be losing your rights. Do we need another SB 941 on the books to infringe on our rights? Yeah. Okay. But to sum it up, we're going to go to and we're going to do hopefully a better job, as good a job as Chris Christie on our uncorrupt old Kate Brown here. And we're going to see what things she's going to do.
our unlikable corruptible Governor Kate Brown with her puppy dogs in the marble doghouse, full of fecal matter, you know what that is, from the dollars being fed to these Marxist pups by rich rats from Michael Bloomberg, George Soros, the wooden Pinocchio, Gabby Giffords, and the usual local state idiot who is a worker for our state government, Penny Akamoto of Ceasefire, Oregon. You know, what a piece of work. And other lap dogs, that, including one that's a pedophile that funds the Democrat Party, and yet, our, does our governor take time to even talk to our opposition? Her opposition? Has the last two governors sit down and talk to anybody in the conservative side or independent side or libertarian side about issues in this state? Yes or no? All right. But they went through and tried to use the, they passed 941 after trying to use the Roseburg incident, which was a terrorist, what they didn't call out. And thank God for the people of Roseburg and that y'all rising up. That's all those that y'all from <coughs> Douglas County there. Thank y'all for being here. Yet the flatulent machine, the lamestream media, Kisses, massages, corruptive Kate's butt, and not holding her accountable. That we, the people, demands. Now she wants California laws again coming soon. If we do not get the lap dogs out of this, out at this election, the following six laws they pass will be infringing our rights, and we further lose more of our freedoms. And all our fans. I ask of you, my fellow Oregonians, and other freedom-loving Americans, in the next four and a half months, the scales of liberty will be swinging left to right until the last ballot, the ballot is counted. I respectfully ask of you, to work to benefit the will of the oh, Sorry, one second. Kate Brown is either guilty or not guilty, I want to hear from y'all, for using emergency clause excessively to infringe on our rights to bear arms and our rights to petition by using the emergency clause. You cannot contest it, the law, and you cannot be able to get a petition so we can vote it, we the people against it. Do you agree or disagree? Guilty! Guilty! All right. Also, her pridefulness and character associated with known party donors to the Democrat Party, who wasn't rebuked by her at all for having sex with underage males and not and the state is Lane County not prosecuted. Or she made no attempt to call district the attorney general's office to investigate this heinous crime. Is she guilty or not guilty of this action? Guilty. The time is now to go ahead and vote for Bud Pierce for our next governor, because if we have four more years of her, this country will be unfriendly to business, it will be infringing on your rights, and at the same time, we might be turning into a new police state like out there in Venezuela. Thank y'all. Just a couple of housekeeping things before we bring up our last speaker. This is Chuck. There's another container of chalk right down there. If you'd like to leave a message for Kate Brown and do some chalk art, come grab some and help yourself and leave a message. She uh, unfortunately had a sick mother, so she couldn't be in town today. Take that for what it's worth. Um, just reiterate, we have petitions over here for you to sign for Mark Callahan. The state wants $3,000 to put his information in the voter guide. He doesn't have to do that if we can get him 500 signatures. So if you can sign those petitions while you're here today, that would be awesome. We'd really appreciate it. And if you, if you are able to circulate one, let us know. We'll get you a petition. We have to get those in by August 15th, so we're about three or four weeks away. And our last speaker today is from Oregon, or from, well, he's from Oregon 3% too, because you're zone leader, right? 
but he's also National VP of the 3% Organization, Mr. Tom McCurgan. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm Tom McCurgan. I'm with the Oregon Oak Keepers, and I cover Zone 4, which are the five, the five counties in the south. And uh, I want to thank all of you for being here today. It's just wonderful to see you. Uh, and I, w I want to ask you a couple of things real quick and then run something by you. Uh, how many of you have ever said to your children, I'd stand in front of a Mack truck for you? How many? Okay, well, you better tighten your boots, laces, because there's a convoy coming, folks, and it's coming real fast. Now, your president is trying to enact all kinds of legislation uh, through his own executive orders. But we're not going to tolerate that, just as we're not going to tolerate Kate Brown. And apparently she has a sick mother. I think she is a sick mother. <laughs> okay. Down in my part of the woods, uh, I live in Coos County, and a lot of us ask, what can we do for our country or our county to make, make it better? I would suggest that you start local and that you take care of your own community first. Now, we took a uh, Second Amendment preservation ordinance to our county commissioners, and they refused to, two of the three refused to pass it. So we decided we're going to go out and get petitions and fill them up, and we did. We put it out on the uh, uh, ballot last year, and it passed by 61%. So you guys can do that, too. We've done it in several other counties. We've got uh, Willowa County, Wheeler, Coos County, Douglas County, Columbia County, and I believe Lane County as well. And the other thing we've done, too, is we've uh, covered five counties in the, in the Oregon that uh, disagrees profusely with the National Defense Authorization Act. So we've got these things illegal in our county. Uh, Coos County is a safe haven for the Second Amendment. So they can't enforce all these laws that they're going to be doing up here. So what I want to do is I was uh, talking to my county commissioner, and uh, if you guys want to get anything on the ballot before uh, for the November ballot, you got till August 30th. So what you can do is uh, go to a, a website that we posted our ordinance on, any of you that are interested in doing this, just go on there and download it and modify it to meet your county's name and your information on it. And we've already done the work for you. So what you want to do is take it into your county commission and get on the agenda and then ask them if they would place this on the ballot as is without any alteration or modification. So that's what you want to do and the people will vote for it as well. So let me ask you, how will, uh, how will all you folks like to see Chris Ann Hall again? Okay, well guess what? She's going to be coming up here in September. On the 12th, she'll be in Roseburg. The 13th and 14th, she'll be in Coos Bay and Coquille. And on the 15th, she's going to be here in Salem. So I want you guys to come and see her. It's a rare opportunity to have Chris Ann here. Um, she's the one that does the the genealogy of the Constitution is like she said. Our founders had over 700 years of examples to go by from English law from the beginning of the year 1100 called the Charter of Liberty. And then, of course, it goes to 1215 with the Magna Carta. So these people were not dumb old guys with white wigs and racist and all that. These people were wordsmiths. Everything they put down had a meaning for it, and they knew exactly what that meant. And the definitions have not changed, even though they tried to do that in today's encyclopedias and dictionaries, it still remains the same meaning as it was back then. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sick of the uh, gun laws that are coming out that don't even uh, affect us in the way of uh, positiveness. These things only affect us negatively, and it doesn't affect a criminal in any way, shape, or form. And I know this because I'm a retired policeman. We, uh, on another topic here about that, we let issue directives to all of our state presidents nationwide that we will be protecting the boys in blue and brown as their jobs are getting more and more crazy and more dangerous. So that we want to watch out for our brothers in blue. They're the first line of the past, but we're the second. 
So what do you think of this Kate Brown's executive orders that she's going to do? Do we like them? No. Are we going to abide by them? No. We will not comply. No. We're Americans. We're not going to sit down. We're not going to shut up. We're going to be heard whether they like it or not. If you're not part of an organization like Three Percenters and Oath Keepers, I encourage you to get involved with them. Join them. Start going to the meetings and the training. Next uh, meeting we have in Coos County, we're going to be teaching how to do suturing, sewing up in the battlefield wounds and all kinds of things. And get with your county coordinators. Visit us on Facebook and also at uh, Oregon3Percenters.com. You can find that all on Facebook if you go there and join us. Put in a, a, a friend request to join the, the group. And I think you're going to find it being very, very effective this, these days. Now, other states are looking to Oregon for examples because we're doing things right. We're getting things down. Yep. Oregonians don't put up with much crap from people. And I tell you what, <laughs> that's why you're all here today, because we don't want to deal with it no more. We want to let them know to stop it. So unfortunately, we can't. Uh, they're not here on today to listen to us, and I'm sure they wouldn't anyway. But do leave a message with your chalk out here and try to be polite. No uh, profanity, please. <laughs> Folks, there will be a reckoning one day. And unfortunately, it's going to be happening in our cities and our towns and our yards. The revolution isn't just coming. The revolution is here now. We're the wards of our children's liberty. We're not going to give up their safety for liberty, not one iota. It's up to us to do it. Children can't make a decision for themselves. They're only told to do what they're told to do and what they're taught. And as you know, that they've been caught and taught in our school systems today. But we need to put a stop to it. This uh, thing about the gender bathrooms and stuff, we're going to be working on that, putting a stop to it here in Oregon. And uh, again, I encourage you, please, get involved politically and get these ordinances on the ballot. Matter of fact, our ordinance is a, is a state ordinance through the Second Amendment Preservation. And it even has fines on there for $2,000 for the first offense and $4,000, uh, well, 2000 per person that does it, trying to enforce like SB 941. So that gives us a safe haven there. And if it's a corporation or like a, uh, a city or a county, they can be fined $4,000. You see, so we have a little bit of teeth in our ordinance. I encourage you folks to do that as well. Thank you all so much for being here and listening to my diatribe. I appreciate it. And just enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you and God bless America. Um, one last thing. I'm glad Tom brought up the Chris Ann Hall because, you know, she's basically going to be all in the states. So no matter where you live, you should be able to get to, to one of those meetings to see her. The other one, how many have smartphones? Probably everybody but me. Y'all have smartphones? Okay, put this on your calendar. September 23rd, that's a Friday. It's in the afternoon. Rally, right here on the court steps. It's gonna be a weekday. They're gonna be in session in the legislature. Kate Brown's gonna be here. Show up on the 23rd because that's really hard hitting against Kate Brown and, and all the laws that she's trying to put into effect. So, mark it down, September 23rd, about eight weeks from, today, from yesterday. Dory, where are you? Got anything else you want to say here? Come on, Miss Organizer. Are you done? I don't want to keep these people much longer. They've been here a couple hours, and you know we want to let them get going and get home to their families. Okay, Dory wanted me to remind you, September 3rd, what time? At noon, September 3rd, Portland, all lives matter. Against injustice. Thank you. So if you're in the Portland area, that is Labor Day weekend. But that's that's a Saturday of Labor Day weekend. So if you can get up there for that, Dory would really appreciate your support on that. And anybody, we're good? Yes, thank you so much to our, our um, I hate it when I can't think of a word. How
guys are running that stuff. We got JR and Sean. Audio equipment, that's what it's called. Look, Carol's just way too tired, too. We need naps. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for coming. Over here, we've got the Mark Callahan thing. Uh, Ella. See, I, can't, I am tired. Okay, so we got booze over here. If you haven't been to visit them or you haven't mingled and visited with each other, go ahead and do so at this time. Thank you. Signing petition for Mark Callahan. Ha, 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 ha. 